Hello, Rays fans. This is a Turfway Park report for Thursday, January 17th, 2019. Eight races on the car. Temperature at post time 36 degrees with some light rain in the Florence area. The first race, a Philly three year old 15 to 10 claimer to go a mile on a fast poly track. Morning line favorite, the entry for the Rolling Oaks Farm. Number one, Rogue Two, and the 1A crossing Alaska. And they are racing in Florence. And up on the outside, crossing Alaska is offensive-minded, chasing by is displaying speed as well. Now, Flying Lynn Lyon stacks up a three-wide third. Rogue Two tucked in along the inner rail from fourth, a length in front of Chasing Melody, who is fifth as they circumnavigate the opening turn. Then Noble Destiny starts to advance outside of that one, and that makes Laser Lynn last of them all. They pass the six far and long marker, straighten up the back stretch, just seven or eight lengths from top to bottom, and the first quarter was 24 and three. Up the backside they go, chasing by, still shows the way, but now Rogue Two keyed up to go on. Rogue Two punching up between horses now to dispute the pace with chasing by. Meanwhile, flying Lynn Lyon in a perfect tracking position from third, a length in front of a Noble Destiny who is fourth. Then there's a margin of five or six back to Divine Melody, who is a length in front of Crossing Alaska, and still out at the back of the pack, Laser Lynn will have to pass them all, but she's starting to move now as they have three and a half furlongs to travel. The half mile, 48 and four. It's still Rogue Two in Chasing By up top, and Rogue Two now opens up a half a length on Chasing By. The whip comes out on her. Two lengths further back. Noble Destiny starts to roll now with those blinkers on today. She's third as Flying Lens Lions coming under a vigorous ride from fourth, and Laser Lens on track from the back of the pack, but she's out by the track kitchen as they straighten away to the top of the lane. And Rogue Two will turn them on down outside the eighth pole. Rogue Two's in front by five or six. Whip comes out on Chasing By. She's still responding as Noble Destiny is uh, to the outside of her, continuing to grind Laser Lynn, but she's out past the middle of the course inside the final 16th. Rogue 2 is a decisive winner. She won by at least 10. Noble Destiny was second. Laser Lynn third. Tight for fourth. I think it was chasing by, just holding to the outside. Uh, excuse me, Flying Lynn Lion in 140. And it was number one, Rogue Two, who crushes the field here. Rogue Two won by almost a dozen lengths for owner Rolling Oaks Farm LLC, the trainer Jimmy Chapman, and Johnny McKee up top for the winning ride. Rogue Two as the favorite, 322 22 10. Second number five, Noble Destiny. Third number four, Laser Lynn. Finishing fourth, the three chasing by. Exacta $30.20. The Trifecta $45.50. And the Super $382.40. Running time for the mile. 142 and 4. Tonight's second race, a Philly Mayor non 3 claim event, claiming tag $5,000 a race a mile. Scratch the six, Spy Angel. One on favorite, on the class drop number eight, My Dark Secret for the Birthday Girl, Jamie Grubbs. They are off. Quick start for Robotron. Also, Royal Night Owl jumped well, and these two will dispute it. On to the run of the clubhouse turn. Little Pom Pom in the nation's ninth all-time leading jockey. Perry Utes came away racing in third. Choppy, choppy, choppy. Saves all the ground from fourth. A length in front of Honor Bar, who's worked her way all the way to the two-path from that seven draw. My Dar's secret to the outside of her. Dulce de Leche is second last, and Hero the West is at the back of the pack. Field of eight covered by just about seven or eight lengths as they took the first quarter 24 and four, and they straighten up for the back stretch. And Robotron, the daughter of Sky May, says she's made the point, but she's now accompanied by the outside Royal Night Owl. Presses up in the center. It is Lil Pom Pom, shaded to the outside by My Dark Secret. And coming underneath, there's Choppy Choppy Choppy. And Choppy Choppy Choppy, the gray advancing up to the inside to make it three across the track. Meanwhile, My Dark Secret on the class drops move into fourth. She's really keen to go on. And Dulce de Leche is right on her flank as well. Lil Pom Pom is being ridden to hold position there as Honor Bar is underneath her and still four or five back to Hero the Best. The half mile, 49 and two fifth seconds. On to the far turn, just about five sixteenths from home, and it's Choppy, 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 and Robotron. There goes My Dark Secret, cut loose to the outside. They're three abreast, and following that move, Dulce de Leche has moved into fourth, white silk screen cap, and running on from the back. Here comes Big Long Shot, Hero the Best, as they straighten away to the top of the home stretch, three quarters, one fifteen and one, and they're torn on down for the money. And My Dark Secret, the big favorite on the class drop with an eighth of a mile to go, has the lead by three. Here comes Hero the Best at 58-1, to one, and she's rolling with a 16th to go. It's My Dark Secret and Hero of the Best, the longest shot on the board. A big bomb to start the pick four, 58-1, worst to first to get it done. 
My Dark Secret was second. And finishing third, Dulce de Leche, Choppy, Choppy, Choppy in 143 and 1. Number nine, Hero of the Best, was last early, and she rolled home here at 58 to 1 for owner trainer Monica Crewman, Hector Ramos, the winning jockey, Hero of the Best. Blows up the tote board 119 80, 29 20, 13 20. Second number eight, My Dark Secret. Third number five, Dulce de Leche. Fourth to two, Chappy, Chappy, Chappy. Exact of 435.60, the try 944.80. The daily double 162.80, Superfecta 9,782.60. Running time 143 and 1. Third race, a condition claimer to go six furlong. Scratch the eight, he, excuse me, scratch the nine, he is ruthless. Let me do that again, sorry. Three, two, one. Third race, a claimant event for horses who haven't won a race in the last 12 months to go six furlongs. Scratch number nine. Morning line favorite number seven, double Derringer for T.R. Hain. They are off. Quick start for Jenny's Regal Man. Also, Run Run bounced out well. Meanwhile, the favorite double Derringer off the pace today is in third. Magical Connection is tugging hard against Lascano and is hard held there, in fact, from fourth. Covered up to the outside by Indy Rhythm. Then to the inside, the gray to Taglia just got past as he continue up the backside by flying around. And five lengths to the late running, swiper no swiping, past the half-mile pole. The first quarter contested 23. And for Jenny's Regal Man and the Bug Boy show the way, three parts of a length. Now the favorite, Double Derringer, at 3-2 to two is advancing up to the outside. As Run Run has been uh, now in, relegated to the third position, about to be passed by Indy Rhythm, who's on the move from fourth following that move. Here comes Longshot flying around as a race towards the head of the lane. Double Derringer attacking from the inside. Jenny's Regal Man as they race to the head of the lane. Run Run now backing up after him to the inside as they race to the head of the lane. And up on the outside, here comes Indy Rhythm, who's getting a dream trip down the stand side. Four across the track with a final furlong to go. And Indy Rhythm up and after the lead to the outside by the 16th pole. Indy Rhythm to the outside. Run Run boxing on. Down to the wire. Indy Rhythm. Three parts of a link winner. Long shot Jenny's Regal Man fought gamely to be in a photo there for second in 113 and 1. Number eight, Indy Rhythm rolls down the center of the track and gets it done here for owner Miguel Portillo, Edward Fernandez, the winning trainer, and Rolando Aragon up top. Number eight, Indy Rhythm picks up lifetime victory number four, his third victory here over the turfway surface. The winner returns a 1560. 640 and 380. Finishing second, number six, Jenny's Regal Man. Third, number five, Run Run. Fourth to seven, Double Derringer. Exacto 10540, the try, 169.20. Daily Double, $512 even. Superfecta, $606 even. And the first pick three on the card for a $1 ticket return, 722.50. Running time for the six panels, 113 and 1. Tonight's fourth race, a four and up non two claimant event, $7,500 to the tag. They'll go six and a half for longs. Scratch number six, Morning Line favorite the three, break the deal with Perry Utes. They're at the post. They are off. Horrible beginning for Order of the Quest. Dwelt and is last. It's Break the Deal, sending on out, who'll have company, though. Marvelous Sky comes on through underneath, and these two hook up as they leave that six and a half furlong shoot. Deliver Glory in hand from third. Then comes the pair of Pain in the Arch and Pour Me Another One as they race up the backside. There's a break of five more back to Royal Ghost, who's two in front of Slow Starting Order of the Quest. They head up the backside, just outside a half mile to travel, and up on the outside, Break the Deal, three parts of a link to Marvelous Sky, who has a foothold at the fence in second. Pour Me Another One, the gray stalking in third. After a quarter 23 seconds fight then we space back two links to painting the arch who is fourth deliver glory coming on a ride from fifth nothing yet from royal ghost and order the quest can see them all five sixteenths of a mile to travel break the deal still shows the way after a half of 46 and three fifth seconds break the deal first off the claim shows the way to the top of the lane the lead's just about a length here comes pour me another one on the move and on the attack too wide as they straighten away to the top of the lane just outside the eighth pole now whip comes out on break the deal trying to brace for the challenge of the gray pour me another one who's coming at him and coming on late on the scene royal ghost is finder underway as they have a 16th to go it's pour me another one trying to put away a pesky break the deal royal ghost got in gear but Got in gear too late. Pour me another one. Wins by just about a length. Break the deal was second. Late charge from Royal Ghost to be third in 120 and one. Number seven, pour me another one on the turn back. Gets it done here. 
The game winner is owned and bred by Sherry and Jeff Greenhill. Jeff Greenhill, also the winning trainer, and PD Prentice up top for the winning ride. Pour me another one. $10, $5, $240. Second number three, Break the Deal. Third number five, Royal Ghost. And finishing fourth, number four, Painting the Arch. Exacta 3880, the try, 4670. Daily Double 8420, Superfecta 26120. And the Rolling Pick 3 paid on two of three correct. And each $1 ticket returns $37. Running time was 120 and 1. Fifth race, a maiden claimer $7,500 to go a mile. Scratch the one, Glenn Griff. Morning line favorite, Toby Keith's number eight, Pistol Box with Abel Escano. They are off. Not the greatest start for Silky Gold or Old Cup. But it was a fast one for my kind of kid who comes on out. He'll have company, though. All hands on deck and Steve and Aaron, these three, right across the track. Zapper with the blinkers on is in behind that top trio from fourth. Pistol Box, the favorite, is fifth and out in about the five path. Then four links back to Old Cup who settles on just about uh, six or seven lengths off the pace. And there's a margin of four back to Colonial Composer. Majestic Destiny is right alongside that one. And Silky Gold, after that slow start, is last of the nine. First quarter, 24, three-fifths seconds. Up the backside they go with five and a half furlongs to go. All hands on deck, keeping tabs with my kind of kid. These two are nose to nose in stride for stride. Steven Aaron has backed off the speed from third. Then a margin of two lengths back to uh, Zapper, who races just to the inside of Old Cup. Then a space of about three or four lengths back to uh, Pistol Box as they pass the half-mile pole in 48. And four. On to the far turn. No twist in the pot. It's still my kind of kid and all hands on deck. They continue to spar it out up top. Coming on through to the inside. Here comes Old Cup with a quick turn of foot to move into third. Zapper to the outside of Stephen Aaron. And the big favorite is coming under a heavy rod. Pistol Box is back into fifth. Whip comes out and has nine links to raise. And a quarter mile to do it as they race around the turn. And it's still my kind of kid and all hands on deck. These two continue to spar it out as they straighten away to the top of the lane. And on the outside, all hands on deck to the inside my kind of kid continuing to grind away here comes pistol box to the outside also moving with him is zapper wide open with a furlong to go as pistol box takes the lead moving into second it's zapper as they race down towards the line here's dream walking farms incorporated and pistol box will win it pistol box wins by just about five in the end tight photo for second i think zapper just nosed out my kind of kid in the running time 142 flat Number eight, Pistol Box, well reserved down the backstretch, but kicked it into top gear, Turner for home, and made his 13th start, the winning one for Toby Keith. Pistol Box, trained by Tom Vanberg and ridden to victory by Abel Lascano. Pistol Box, owned and bred by Dreamwalking Farms, Incorporated. The winner, 420, 280, 220. Second number seven, Zapper. Third number five, My Kinda Kid, finishing fourth. Number two, Silky Gold. Exacta, $14. Trifecta, $38.10. The double thirty dollars forty cents. The superfecta four hundred fifteen forty. Pick three came back one hundred six sixty. Pick four seven thousand five hundred fifty three dollars eighty five cents. And the pick five for fifty cents five thousand seven hundred thirty dollars and five cents. Running time for the mile one forty two flat. Tonight's sixth race, a maiden special weight for the Phillies and Mares to go six furlongs. Field of eight with no changes. And the favorite, Calumet Farms, number eight, B-Bomb, a daughter of English Channel to be ridden by Rafael Mojica. Back to the outside, they're at the post. They are off. Quick start for B-Bomb, who jumped well. Also, smartly away, there goes Blue Skies coming from between horses, Sky Dady. Down on the inside, My Midnight Affair and Real is racing up between horses keen to go on there. Miss Pinkerton and out at the back early. Diane Dancer for Stonecrest is last but a compact field as they charge up the backside. And they're just outside the half mile pole. Well bunched and just narrowly, My Midnight Affair leads them by the half. Up on the outside trying to press on, Blue Skies coming. Three wide, Sky at 84 wide, B-Bomb. And now Miss Pinkerton advancing up into just about four lengths off those leaders after a quarter 23 and one fifth second. From the inside, My Midnight Affair to the outside, Sky Dady, as they have five sixteenths of a mile to go. Three wide, here comes B-Bomb, trying to follow that move as Miss Pinkerton, as they race around the turn to the top of the home stretch, and Sky Dady will turn them on down to the inside. My Midnight Affair is being shoved along as they straighten away to the top of the lane, and B-Bomb is in third with a furlong to go. It's Sky Dady trying to hold B-Bomb, but My Midnight Affair, she's not done. She's plugging away along the fence with a sixteenth of a mile left to go, and Sky Dady for Shane Sands trying to hold sway here, and the daughter of Sky Classic will break her maiden by just about a length in the end. B-Bomb was second, my midnight affair third, in 112 and four.
Number seven, Sky Deity, well prepared off the layoff by Shane Sands, breaks her maiden here in her first poly track try. The daughter of Sky Classic, owned by Renee Van Salter and ridden to victory by John McKee. She returns eight twenty, five dollars and three twenty, finishing second. Number eight, Bee Bomb. Third, number one, My Midnight Affair, and fourth, number five, Miss Pinkerton. Exact to twenty six eighty, try forty four twenty. The double, 1580, Superfecta, 192.60, and the pick three, $64.90. Running time for the six furlongs, 112 and four. Tonight's seventh race and allowance event for the Phillies and Mares, which have never won two, the race a mile, field of nine with eight betting interest. Morning line favorite at eight to five, number three, Sista's ready for Charlie Lepresti. They are off. Quick start. From the inside for Twin Channel, her stable mate, Queen's Anne's Lace to the outside, and right sandwich in between those two is Don't Laugh, I'm Paid For. These three right on the line on the charge to the first turn. Then another line of three. It's Sisters Ready to the inside of Galileo's Melody, three wide Lucy's Town. Then we space back to Sweet Song of the Nile, the two back markers double oaked, and uh, she might tell at the back of the pack. Past the six furlong marker and they straighten up for that long backstretch journey. And uh, Twin Channel, the daughter of English Channel, under a long rain from McKee, shows the way up the backside by just about a length. Don't laugh, I'm paid for. Races to the inside of Queen Anne's Lace. Then we trail back two more links to Sisters Ready, who stalks them from fourth as they continue up the backside. Link for the back to Galileo's Melody towards her inside is Sweet Song of the Nile as they pass the half mile. Up top, it's Twin Channel after a half, 49 and 3. And now here comes Queen Anne's Lace, the other Calumet charge on hold. She's full of run. Right off that one's flank there in second. Three wide. Here comes both Sweet Song of the Nile and on her outside, Galileo's Melody. And being shoved along under a vigorous ride as Sister's ready to the inside, but she's not advancing as they race around the turn. Twin Channel now shaking up as McKee starts to go to work. And Twin Channel's going to float stableweight Queen's Anne's Lace as they straighten away to the top of the lane. And Twin Channel and Queen's Anne's Lace, it's down to the Calumet Charges with a furlong to go. And still finding up top is Twin Channel Queen's Anne's Lace from the backfield on the far outside. She might tell is closing in with interest with 116th to go and twin channel. Twin channel all the way up top, coast to coast to give McCree three on the card. Tight photo for second. I think Queen Anne's Lace just held late charging. She might tell. And Sweet Song of the Nile is fourth. Number one, Twin Channel broke sharp again, and she wired the field for the second straight time here at Turfway. Perfect two for two over the poly track. The winner owned by the Calumet Farm, trained by Steve Lister, Johnny McKee with a hat trick. Twin Channel returns 380, 420, and 280. Second was the Calumet Farms Queen Anne's Lace. That was the 1A. Third, number eight, She Might Tell, finishing fourth, number two, Sweet Song of the Nile. Finishing fifth for the Superfecta was number seven, Lucy's Town. So the Exacta of 1 and 8, 1420. The 182 Trifecta, $112.20, roll and double $29. The winning Superfecta combination was 1827. That came back 1367.40. The pick three, 36, 30. Eighth and final race, a maiden Philly three-year-old claiming event, $7,500 to go six and a half furlong. Scratch numbers 3, 11, 13, and 14. The morning line favorite number two, Mama's Angel with Senior Hisby in the bike. Horses continuing to load for the Florence foggy final. They are off. Quick start for Shooty's Girl, who was quick into stride. Coronella off the gate in second. From between horses, there goes Mama's Angel. And down to the inside, Ragazza Veloce. And from between horses, up the backside, Southern Romance is racing a joint fourth. To her outside is Kelly's Agenda as they continue up the backside. Then a space of two back to It's Cold in Here. Tap that ass is two in front of She's Wild Enough, who's a joint last with Viva Perlet. As they head up the backside... And they head into the far turn. The leader, Shooty's Girl. Shooty's Girl, the fairground invader, shows the way by a length and a half. Southern Romance, a big long shot, races up to the outside. Now there goes Cornella. In between horses, the class dropper has moved a closer second as they continue to race around the turn. And on hold now, Mama's Angel just had to check outside the quarter pole as they continue to race around the turn, approaching the top of the home stretch. And it's still Shooty's Girl on a tenuous lead. Cornella switches off cover now. Here comes Mama's Angel as they race to the head of the lane and they turn on down for the money. It's Shooty's Girl and 
Malcolm Franklin by the eighth pole with a two-length lead. Uh, up on the outside, it's cold into here. Through from the inside, it's Cornella from the backfield. Viva Perlet was last, and she's rolling by the 16th pole. It's still Shooty's Girl finding. It's cold into here. It's going to be second, and Viva Perlet third, but Shooty's Girl. Well, man, on the class drop, she win gathered up by almost a half dozen in 115 and 2. Number 10, Chudy's Girl. Wins in the fog here on the class drop in the first start for the Sue Anderson barn. The daughter of Cantero is owned by the JS Stables LLC. Gate to wire winner, ridden by Malcolm Franklin. $680, $424 on the winner. Second number five, it's Colden De Hare. Third number six, Viva Perlet. Finishing fourth, number nine, Coronella. And fifth, the 12, Kelly's Agenda. Exacta 38.40, Trifecta 134.10. The Daily Double 16.40, pick 4.55 even. Pick three, 3280, Superfecta 856.80. High five was hit, $1,135.10. Well, that wraps it up for this Thursday edition of Racing from Florence. Live racing back at you Friday with a 615 post. For all of us here at the track, thanks for tuning in. This has been the Turfway Park Report.